Hello and welcome to the Cardboard Dungeons X-Wing Ship Review of the Star Viper, one of the four Wave 6 expansion packs that introduced the new Scum and Villainy faction to the game. Now, when Fantasy Flight announced the Scum and Villainy faction at Gen Con last year, this was the ship I was most excited about. I've been a fan of the Star Viper since the multimedia Star Wars experiment that was Shadows of the Empire, filled in the events between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and introduced Star Wars fans to the Black Sun criminal organization and its leader, the ruthless Prince Shizor. The Star Viper is a very cool ship with a striking profile. It reminds me of something out of the Tron series. In X-Wing terms, the Star Viper is the Scum Faction's primary arc dodger, comparable to the TIE Interceptor or A-Wing in terms of maneuverability. It excels at precise positioning and avoiding enemy fire. Here's the maneuver dial for the Star Viper. It has every normal movement except for the speed 3 turns and speed 5 straight. It's also the first ship we've seen with the new Segnor's Loop Maneuver, which it can perform at speed 3. The Star Viper has an attack value of 3, agility of 3, hull value of 4, and shield value of 1. Interestingly, these are the exact same stats as a TIE Interceptor with the Royal Guard title, hull upgrade, and shield upgrade attached. The action bar is also similar, but not identical, to the TIE Interceptor. Star Vipers have Focus, Target Lock, Barrel Roll, and Boost. The absence of an Evade action makes the Star Viper a little easier to hit, which is probably why it has the increased hull and shield values built into its stat line. Star Vipers have a very basic upgrade bar. They can all load a single torpedo, and of course a couple of the pilots have access to the elite talents. However, the Star Viper title drastically improves the ship's upgrade options and makes it much more interesting. Prince Shizor is of course the top pilot for this ship. He has a pilot skill of 7 and costs 31 points. When he defends, a friendly ship at range 1 can suffer one normal or critical hit instead of him. This is a sort of reverse draw their fire, letting Shizor pass damage to his underlings as long as they're nearby. The maneuver dials on both the Z-95 Headhunter and Y-Wing are close enough to the Star Viper that either ship can easily fly in tight formation with Shizor. This ability sort of makes up for the lack of evade, and as long as Shizor has a couple of friends around, it makes him pretty hard to kill. Shizor can also take an elite pilot talent. Next we have Shizor's Android Bodyguard Guri. She costs 30 points and has a pilot skill of 5. She can also take an elite pilot skill. Her ability gives her a free focus token at the start of the combat phase when she's at range 1 of an enemy ship. This isn't a focus action, which means that it's possible for Guri to take a focus action and then get a second focus token when her ability activates. Black Sun Vigo is a non-unique pilot with a skill of 3 and a cost of 27 points. Finally, the Black Sun Enforcer has a pilot skill of 1 and costs 25 points. Compared to the TIE Interceptor, we can see pretty clearly here the effect that the extra hull and shield and the ability to carry a torpedo has on the Star Viper's point cost. Compared to the Alpha Squadron pilot at 18 points, the bottom tier Star Viper costs 7 points more. Moving on to the upgrades, we've got Bodyguard, a unique elite pilot talent. This means, of course, that you can have only one of this upgrade in your squadron. There are very few unique elite upgrades in the game. This one joins Lone Wolf and Squad Leader as only the third we've seen so far. Bodyguard costs 2 points, is Scum Faction only, and it lets you spend the focus token at the start of the combat phase to increase the agility of a friendly ship at range 1 by 1 until the end of the round. Pictured on the card is Guri, who is Prince Shizor's bodyguard. Remember Guri's pilot ability to gain a focus when she's at range 1 of an enemy ship? She has built-in synergy with this elite talent. She can spend that free focus to make her boss, or any other friendly ship at range 1, harder to hit. Calculation costs 1 point, and lets you spend the focus token to change one focus result to a critical hit when attacking. This is interesting because it gives you options now when you have a focus token. If you roll 2 or 3 focus results, you can spend it normally and change them all to normal hits. Roll a single focus result? change it to a critical hit. I'm not in love with this card, but it's cheap. 
And in case you're not a big enough Star Wars fan to recognize him on sight, that is Prince Shizor himself pictured on the card, doing his very best to look calculating. Next up, we have a brand new system upgrade, which is a big deal because these cards are few and far between. Until now, there have been only four system upgrades to choose from in the game. Accuracy Corrector costs three points and lets you cancel all of your dice results when attacking and then add two normal hit results, which cannot be modified again during the attack. This is very interesting, especially with the upcoming TIE Advanced title card that will let it equip a system upgrade at a steep discount. The ships currently in the game that can take system upgrades are the B-Wing, E-Wing, Lambda-class Shuttle, and TIE Phantom. And as we'll see shortly, a couple of the Star Viper pilots can as well, thanks to the title upgrade. Now, all of those ships have attack values of 3 or higher, which means that Accuracy Corrector will let you get two guaranteed normal hits, which is suboptimal for all of the ships. You'll likely be using Target Lock, and or focus actions to try your hardest to get maximum hits out of them, which makes Accuracy Corrector a fallback solution at best. But on the TIE Advanced, which has an attack value of 2, this guarantees full hits on every pull of the trigger outside of range 1. So I can see this getting use on that ship, although we need to see the full contents of the upcoming Imperial Raider expansion to know if this will be the best system upgrade for it. Ion Torpedoes is a torpedo upgrade, that we first saw in the VT-49 Decimator expansion. It lets you spend the target lock to make a 4 dice attack against a target at ranges 2 to 3. On a hit, the defender and each ship at range 1 receive an ion token. It costs 5 points, and like all torpedoes, gets discarded on use. Inertial Dampeners is an illicit upgrade, with a cost of 1 point. When you reveal your maneuver, you can discard this card to instead perform a white zero speed maneuver, and then receive a stress token. Until now, the Lambda class shuttle has been the only ship in the game capable of not moving at all, thanks to the speed zero maneuver. Now, any pilot with the option to use illicit upgrades can do it once per match. Pretty cool. All right, now we've got one of the most highly anticipated upgrades of Wave 6. Auto Thrusters is a modification that costs two points. It reads... When defending, if you are beyond range 2 or outside of the attacker's firing arc, you may change one of your blank results to an evade result. You can equip this card only if you have the boost action icon. Most X-Wing players see this card as a fix for the TIE Interceptor, which has dropped out of tournament level play thanks to the rise of the TIE Phantom and the increase in turret primary weapons, which negate their arc dodging ability. This card gives extra survivability to ships that are out of the firing arc of their attackers, basically guaranteeing at least one evade result. Couple that with an evade and or focus token, and ships with this upgrade will be much harder to kill. Because both this card and engine upgrade, which adds the boost action to a ship, are modifications, it's worth noting that at this point in the game, the only ships capable of using auto thrusters are those that have boost printed on their pilot cards. Those ships are the TIE Interceptor, A-Wing, Star Viper, and Aggressor. There are two copies of this card in the expansion. Hull Upgrade is a modification that has previously been available only in the Imperial Aces expansion pack. It costs 3 points and increases your hull value by 1. Finally, we have the Star Viper title card, Virigo. It costs 1 point and can only be used with pilots whose skill is 4 or higher, which means that as, as of now, only Prince Shizor and Guri can use it. This makes sense because Virigo is Shizor's own prototype Star Viper. This title adds the system and illicit upgrade icons to the upgrade bar. There aren't many of these upgrade types in the game yet. As I mentioned before, there are just 5 system upgrades currently, and we've seen only 4 of the new illicit upgrade category. But the low quantity doesn't mean low quality, and there are some really solid cards in each category already in the game. Advanced sensors in particular will work great with this ship, letting you perform actions before revealing your maneuver dial. This will let you take an action before revealing a red Segnor's loop maneuver, or reposition with boost or barrel roll before moving. You could also take a hotshot blaster for a one-shot surprise turret attack. 
Added build flexibility is always good in X-Wing, so this title card is very nice. And that's the Star Viper. It's an interesting ship. It wants to perform a lot like the TIE Interceptor in A-Wing, but it's more expensive thanks to added hull and shields and the ability to carry a torpedo. Because of the extra cost, you're going to want to take measures to improve your survivability when flying the ship. Luckily, this expansion gives you a fantastic new way to do that with the Auto Thrusters modification, as well as Shizor's built-in damage mitigation and the Bodyguard Elite talent. Thanks for watching the Cardboard Dungeons X-Wing Ship Reviews. See you next time.